Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. It's Rob Kosberg with another episode of the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. Uh, especially excited to uh, have an incredible guest, uh, somebody that in some ways needs no introduction. Uh, you are going to learn a ton from Sharon Lecter is an entrepreneur, international speaker, best-selling author, but more than just a best-selling author, if there's such a thing. Um, many people know of Sharon because she is the co-author of uh, the book written in 1997 with Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That book went on to sell over 32 million copies worldwide. Uh, Sharon uh, uh, released 14 other books in the Rich Dad series. Uh, Sharon and her husband partnered with Robert Kiyosaki and started the Rich Dad Companies, of which Sharon was the CEO and co-founder for over 10 years. There's many, many more things I can say about Sharon. She's uh, uh, very high-level mentor and coach working with Disney, Time Warner, major brands. Um, super, super excited to have you on, Sharon, and uh, thank you for being a part of the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. Well, thank you, Rob. I'm delighted to be with you. You know, we talked for a few minutes before. There's so many things that I think our uh, authors and would-be authors would like to learn from you. I'm going to start probably in a place that uh, in for some people isn't the beginning, but it's intriguing to me. And that is, you know, you've done so much. You've authored and co-authored so many books. You've impacted millions of people's lives. <laughs> what in the world is motivating you now, you know, 20 plus years later to continue on this journey, to put out new books, to continue speaking, to start new things? I mean, what, what's the motivation for that for you? Well, thank you for that question, Rob. And I actually have been asked that a couple of times in the last six months. So it's like, I look at them and I go, maybe they're trying to tell me something. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm just wondering for myself, what keeps me going? <laughs> well, I actually have a, a, a new client that I love. And she said to me, Sharon, I don't have to work, but there's still work to do. Mm -hmm. And I told her I was going to borrow that phrase. I like it. Um, I just, the, my joy in life is seeing other people find success. And if there's something that I know, or I can say, say or share that helps them find that one or two things that they can do that creates more success in their lives, that feeds me. And so every single day, you know, I get letters or emails or social media posts about how their somebody's life um, has been improved by something I've written or shared. And that keeps me going. It keeps me, you know, that, that gives me the little extra kick in my step. And it's something that uh, I, as long as I can continue sharing something of value, I want to do it. I grew up in a house where every night as a little kid, my dad would ask me, Sharon, have you added value to someone's life today? Today. Wow. You know, and he's been gone 15 years, but I still ask myself that every night. So as long as I'm upright and can speak into a microphone or from a stage, I want to continue supporting people on their journey to success. That's beautiful. It sounds like you were a product of some pretty exceptional parenting as well, which uh, what a great question to ask, uh, to ask your children. And obviously something that has stuck with you for decades and decades. So wonderful. It definitely it instilled an idea of service, of being of service and adding value and not and being a giver, not a taker. And that's something that has stuck with me forever. So love that. Talk to me about your kind of path to using the written word to expand your impact, to expand your authority, to you know, grow your businesses and do what you've done. You obviously have been doing it for a long time. You continue to do it with your most recent co-authored book that we see on the screen, Exit Rich. That's how we were initially introduced because Michelle was on our, our podcast as well. Talk to me about like your initial foray into that. Was that just something that you had as a, as a passion as a young person, or is that something that you developed because you saw the opportunity? Well, Rob, it is kind of an interesting story. I always was a numbers person. I'm, when I was young, I, my goal was to be a fourth grade math teacher. Not quite sure why, but that's what was my goal. My eighth grade English teacher told me that I 
I would be a famous writer. I thought she was crazy. Wow. And my um, my house mother in college told me I'd be on stage speaking. And um, neither one, I just, it didn't register. I started my career as a CPA, one of the very first women in CPA in public accounting. And I just, you know, I love the fact that your numbers tell a story. All right. And so just as words tell a story, so do your numbers. And I was able to combine those two things and say, okay, let's help people understand more about what the numbers are telling you Mm -hmm. and how you can make your numbers better so that your story is better. And I left public accounting because I had that entrepreneurial bug. I started a woman's magazine. So I got kind of into the whole publishing world. And then I met the inventor of the first talking children's book, the kids' books that have the sound strips down the side. So I helped him grow this around the world. And in doing that, I really learned a lot about publishing and manufacturing and and licensing. Um, We this was back in 1987. Kids did not have electronics dinosaur days, I know. (laughs) But so we said, how can we get parents to trust us? And so we aligned with little companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics, and allowed us to explode this company in a good way around the world. Um, And we had I think we were celebrating a million in sales the first year and then went to nine and then 23 and then 52 million when we sold the company. And so continued just into the publishing world from an entrepreneurial endeavor. And then in 1992, we had relocated to Arizona. Our oldest son went off to college and got in a credit card debt came home at Christmas time, his first semester. We didn't even know he had a credit card. He had been welcomed on the ASU campus with a free t-shirt, free money, free pizza, free money. And he had a really good time his first semester in college (laughs) until the bills came in. And that was December of 1992. I was really upset with him, but more upset with myself because I thought I'd taught him about money. And that was when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy, financial education. So at that point in time, December of 1992, I, I brought together all of my background in accounting and numbers and my experience in publishing and said, I need to do something about this problem. So I started working with school systems. And then fast forward a few years, 1996, is when Robert Kiyosaki had gone to see my husband about patenting an idea for a board game. And we met actually at a beta test for the board game cash flow. And I'm the only one that got out of the rat race, but it was so consistent with what I was teaching, the power of assets. We were taught in school to exchange time for money, Mm. but there's only so many hours in the day and so many days in the week. So I want to teach people to invest their time in buying, building, and creating assets. And that was very consistent with the game. So I volunteered to help him commercialize the game. And in that process, he told me he wanted to charge $200 for it. And I said, that's kind of pricey. We're talking 96, 97. And so I said, you should probably write a brochure that explains your philosophy. And that's when he asked me to be his partner. And the brochure we wrote to sell the board game was the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's a heck of a brochure. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So people don't, most people don't understand that. We never expected this to take on a life of its own like it did. And in fact, we never expected to be a publishing company, but people wanted more. So we thought, oh, we'll do a trilogy, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cash Flow Quarter, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. Oh no, they wanted more. So in our 10-year working relationship, we wrote 15 books together in the Rich Dad series. And Rich Dad became a publishing phenomena around the world over well over 100 countries and over 50 languages so but um that's kind of how i got into this whole field it kind of evolved from a love of numbers a love of writing and numbers tell a story let's see if we can help people understand how to make the number their numbers better so i love it you know i i love uh, several things about that story first of all i didn't know it so i always love to hear something that uh, that's new to me one of the things i love about it is it's cool to see something becomes so successful that in one sense wasn't planned or forethought. It more evolved out of, look, we need to do this. And you kind of had this passion as well as this expertise within you. You, of course, you know, melted that together with the idea. And of course, the rich dad, poor dad, the book, and then the rich dad companies uh, came from that. So congratulations for for that success. It's uh, really phenomenal. 
Well, thank you. And I always say, you know, the success of our company was because people found value and shared it. Um, Rich Dev was truly a viral success before yep. the internet, yep. before Amazon, believe it or not. So people found value and shared it. When someone comes and tells me they loved Rich, I always ask them, how, how did you hear about it? It's usually their brother, their yeah. sister, their yeah. mom, their friend. And that's, you know, when you know you've, you've touched the hearts of people when they're sharing it with others. Yeah. And I've shared it with dozens of people. Uh, it's still something that you know you see shared on a regular basis I, I don't know what kind of stats uh, as far as the number of sales every year but it, it still seems that the virility and the desire for it is out there it, it's uh, in many ways like a foundational book for people to read so they understand this idea of kind of escaping the rat race right the charging you know your hours for dollars uh, mindset well, so many people are afraid of money and they're frightened. And so you pick up a book that's like a textbook and you don't get very far because you've got the the frustration of the language that you don't understand about money and the fear of money. Yeah. And so Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a parable. It basically breaks it down into symbols actually written on a fifth grade level. And so it was written to, to share a story that reveals information about money that in a non-threatening, in a non-confrontational manner. Mm. And that's, I think, where the power comes because you, you read a textbook and the information goes into your eye, into your head, and hopefully right. you can remember it at a test time. In order to really move someone, you want to share something that they read and it touches their heart. Mm. When you touch their heart, it makes an impact. It drives them to action. And so that was the whole desire in my writing, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was to create something that people could relate to, even just the title, yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So you immediately think my dad was the rich dad or my dad was the poor dad. Yeah. So you, know, you automatically relate and then go further into the story and understand that these are simple concepts that are not so easily applied unless you take action now. Yeah, beautiful. Love that. You know, the average person listening might dream of that kind of success, millions of copies sold, et cetera. But it's also a little bit like, oh, you know, it seems in some ways like a dream, like so far off. I'm sure you had challenges in writing it. I'm sure there were difficulties. Uh, working with a co-author is difficult in and of itself. I wonder if you can you can speak about that a little bit because many people that are listening are more in the midst of the challenge than they are in you know looking back or dreaming about the success. So, what were some of the biggest challenges in writing it, marketing it? You know, kind of the prelude to the success. Most people think they write a great book and it's going to fly off the shelf, and that's just not the case. No. I, I, I use the description of a three-legged stool. You can write the greatest book, it's one leg. Second leg, you can be the greatest speaker and the ability to speak about the book. But unless you have the third leg, which is the platform and the ongoing promotion and the opportunity and the marketing that goes along with that book, what happens when you only have two legs on a three-legged stool, right? Nothing good. And too many people think, well, the publisher is going to promote it. Well, yeah, that takes about two weeks and then they stop promoting. Right. So, you, you are the driving force behind your book. And it's very important to understand that in today's world, it's a very different world than it was back when we did Rich Dad. I mean, back Back then, to be on the bestseller list, so we would rewrite a new book and half a million copies would be sold the first week. Okay, that's not the case. Today, if you sell 5,000, 10,000 books the first week, it's time for celebration. Right. So, we are in a different world, but it's so important to understand that it's still a fantastic medium to get your message out and to create it. But you have to have a customer journey, not just one and done. You don't write a book and get it out there and you're done. You expect to be a millionaire from the book. Right. It's probably not going to happen. Right. So, you want that book to be part of a customer journey where you have a system and a platform that brings them in and you can nurture them and continue moving it. You know, people call it funnel. I call it customer journey. Yeah. Where are they going? How, you know, what is it they're going to, they're going to be investing in your book. Well, what's next to help them continue on their journey to success? And it's really many people today, they hear oh, a book's a new calling card. So they're going to write it and throw it out there. Well, it's a business. Yeah. If you yeah. truly want to have success with your book, it needs to become a business. Mm, I love that. That's really well said. And it is so different than it was even 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago. You mentioned some things that I talk about a lot. You mentioned funnel. 
I like your definition. It's you know part of the customer journey. We use books that I write within my business in conjunction with funnels. We were talking about a mutual friend of ours, Russell Brunson, uh, just before we started recording. So, you know, we offer my book and bonuses and then upsells, et cetera, ultimately leading to a strategy session or a, a consultative call to see if that person is a good fit, maybe to hire our company for ghostwriting, et, et, et cetera. Talk to me a little bit about what your customer journey quote unquote funnels look like right now with your your various businesses and the things that you're promoting? Well, we have multiple businesses that we own, right. but from the standpoint of my financial education company, everything I do is related to education. So within our products and our my website, we, you basically are going to be going into a financial assistance where people need finances or um, so I have a money mastery course and I have a play big course for people that are already somewhat successful, but are trying to play a bigger game, trying mm. to 10X their business. Yeah. And then I have a funnel for people who want me to speak or be a guest on their podcast. And so you have to really be very clear so that people don't have too many choices right. and that they can go forward. My husband and I own a ranch. So we have a whole system related to getting people to our guest ranch, cherrycreeklodge.com. So you have to be very clear on what your action and what your call to action is. Because if you give too many choices, people get confused and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. So uh, I love that. By the way, I saw the cherrycreeklodge.com. I thought, wow, that's really intriguing. It looks like a cool place to kind of get off the grid and recharge your batteries, I guess. It's a little piece of heaven. When I married my husband, we just celebrated 41 years of marriage. Congrats. So when we, thank you. When we first got married, he wanted a survival property. And so it took you know, about 16 years ago, we found this property. We were looking for 10 acres somewhere in the woods where he'd go build a cabin and shoot his guns. Nobody get mad at him. Well, we found this, this property and it's a piece of Arizona and American history. It's a lot bigger than that. It's 300 acres deeded and 40,000 acres of grazing rights, the Tonto National forest is wow. completely off the grid so it's definitely remote and it's all solar power our own well water we have a lake that's stocked with fish and we created a beautiful guest ranch but overnight we became ranchers we have 325 mama black angus cows and babies and bulls so about 500 head of cattle on our property and lots of horses and we have a shooting range and ship in um, horseback riding and fishing so it's become a multiple businesses in one but um, it was all from the his desire to have a survival property and little did we know we'd actually ever use it as such until COVID hit we were up right. there for about four four months so there you go. I love it. I love it. And I, you know, you mentor and you coach, you you run coaching groups. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Maybe you could share about that. But I assume you go to Cherry Creek with some of your groups sometimes and you get away. We do. We have business retreats. Um, we have business retreats three to four times a year. Nice. Um, I'm not quite sure when this is being launched, but we have one coming up in November 2021 and then another one in January 2022. So people can reach out to us info at Sharon Lecter. It's a fantastic three-day event and sometimes four days depending on the group. And we have an incredible opportunity to work with people and drill down into their businesses and elevate them. I have a high-level mentoring program that is also available. There's a link on my website for more information on that, where we literally step into your business and help you identify and take your put yourself in the position of greatest potential. Mm. And there's a difference between a mentor and a coach. A coach keeps you accountable to a predetermined path. Yeah. They may not have the success in that field. A mentor, I'm not a very good coach. I'm a great mentor. I have, you know, if you want a mentor who's been where you want to go and knows how to open doors, how to steer you around pitfalls, identify opportunities for strategic alliances, new markets, additional revenue streams. That's what Mike and I do with our with our mentoring clients. And we love it. Nice. It absolutely is and it's a choice we've made to do the mentoring because that's not consistent with what I teach, building assets where you're not in, you know, involved all the time. But the mentoring is something we've chosen to do because we love it, the one-on-one -on -one yeah. interaction with people. But we limit ourselves to a certain number of clients. Uh, tell me about that. So, because that, that's intriguing, right? We we have we have two schools of thought. 
uh, in one sense. Um, and I completely understand why you're doing the mentoring because it's more of a passion and something you desire to do. But it sounds like, you know, the ideal school of thought, getting people out of the rat race, getting people out of the exchanging dollars for hours is about building assets. It's about Mm -hmm. creating passive income, cash flow, those Mm -hmm. kinds of things. And then on the other hand, there is still a place, especially if you're passionate about it, for you to exchange dollars for hours sometimes, right, to to maybe get a, a large check because you're working with somebody in your area of expertise where you can really make an impact on them. And so I, 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 I love that you're doing that. Is this a newer thing that you're doing? Is this something that, you know, that uh, you just decided I'm going to play big in this way? Or, you know, talk to me about the, the genesis of it. Well, I'm gonna get, I'll share the, the exact genesis of it. Almost nine years ago, we lost our youngest son. Mm. And um, you're not supposed to outlive your children. So mm. it, it, it sent me into several years of numbness and what I call living in neutral and almost decided to retire. I got all pushback from friends and family. And I think in his ear, he was saying, I could hear him tell me, there's more for you to do, mom, get, you know, get over it. And so we, I launched a Facebook group called Play Big movement because I had always played big with Disney and Time Life and Warner Books. But then when this happened, I kind of went insular. And so, I made the decision to play big again. I had all these incredible opportunities. I was highlighted on the Think and Grow Rich Legacy movie. I was highlighted in the World's Greatest Motivators television series because I made myself open to the possibilities. So I launched the Play Big Movement um, on as a Facebook group to help other people play a bigger game and to understand that, and particularly the last year and a half, this is very relevant. We all have something that stops us in our tracks, whether it be a death, a divorce, a financial setback, an illness. Mm. But you're still here for a reason. And so let's learn from what's happened because what you've been through, you can help other people going through it. And so obviously, I saw this giant hole in my heart for my son. But when I made the decision to start doing one on one mentoring, it actually kind of helps heal a little bit of that. Mm. But most of my clients call me Mama Lecter and Dad Michael's Papa Lecter. So um, it really, it was a choice we made. We did not need to do it financially, but we said, let's, let's see what we can do to help individuals that have that opportunity and they go through a process uh, to see if we truly believe we can help them. And if they're dedicated to the process, we want to support people getting to the next level. And so it is a choice. It's not, it is not what I teach. I teach moving to the right side of the cash flow quadrant, building businesses that operate without you, having investments that operate without you. So you get your time back. Yeah. But this is, this is an investment in other people that we've chosen to make. Yeah, I love that. And thank you for sharing that uh, about your son. I I have three boys. My youngest actually works within my company. And um, I can only imagine, you know, the pain of going through the loss of a child. So thank you for sharing that. I, I can certainly see how it would be crushing. And at the same time, it sounds like you felt like you've got you've gained inspiration from this is what he would want you to do. You know, he would want you to make a difference on other people and in their lives. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, You didn't have to. So very powerful. Thank you. It's the truth. Yeah. Can you talk to me about what the, for lack of a better term, funnel looks like for your play big or your mentoring? Uh, Sure. Because it isn't something that you know, isn't like a focus for you. It's like you said, it, well, it is a focus, but it it's smaller. You you only take a certain number of people. So is it they read one of your books or is it just these are people that see you speak, et cetera? What does that look like? Because I have many of my clients are, are coaches, consultants. They would consider themselves mentors in some way. And um, they're always wondering what's the best way to attract people and, and bring people into their funnels. Well, we I, I speak all the time, so whether it be virtual or live on stage, and so we have different funnels depending on you know what the what the audience is and who the audience is. Um, when I'm doing corporate events, I'm not going to be pitching my entrepreneurial programs, right? So you know, we I have the personal finance and money mastery course, which is an online course, which is a very low cost entry course, and then um, from that we have upsells and downsells. I have the play big course, which is um, a 
they're both the same price on my website, but they're, you know, we do special prices on them. Instead of $14.97, I'll, sell, I'll offer the Play Big course for $6.97. It really helps you play a much bigger game, power of association. Mm. And then my husband and I did a course called The Essential Components of a Successful Business, which is like a college MBA program on every aspect of building your business, digging deep into the, the corporate structure, into the tax side, into the intellectual property world, which we are the premier experts in understanding intellectual property, how to identify it, how to build it, how to protect it, and how to leverage it through licensing and and strategic partnerships. Mm -hmm. So that course is also an online course on my offered on my website. Then we also have the um, different levels of coaching, and my high level coaching is something that is a year long program, and we have that opportunity for about 15 to 20 people. I keep it no more than that because mm -hmm. of the time commitment, because they have my highest priority. Right. And then we also have opportunities for people to participate through the free Facebook group. And then I offer a daily motivational tip called ATMs, like a bank reference, abundance tips and mentorship. Nice. And nice. that that I created at the very beginning of the pandemic to help people keep a positive outlook on life. And it's a daily message every single day. And it's something that is $8 a month or $8.88 a month or $88 for the year that really helps just keep people focused on something positive. And that's something you can go to atm.sharonlector.com for more information on that. But it's, um, you know, I, I, I love that program because, again, it's, we're so much negativity in the world. I want to continue supporting that. And so through each one of these steps, depending on who the audience is, there's a, you go, you enter at one level and then you're in, there's a series of emails, of course, that give you the ability to opt into other programs as well. Beautiful. And then at the end of it is if someone is a good fit, then potentially they might schedule a call for, to learn about your highest level program and Right. And sometimes somebody what, is in an audience and they listen to me and they want to go right to high level yeah. mentoring. And so we have on my website, SharonLector.com, there is a, a actual submission form if you are interested in mentoring that you go through to say, you know, what's your company? How long you've been in business? What's your revenues? What is it that, where do you currently get your customers? And, you know, what what is the best thing, that, you know, the highest priority that you want to learn from me mm -hmm. so that we have the opportunity to kick the conversation up and knowing where you are and where you want to go. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Such great stuff. Maybe we could just for a moment, uh, and you probably have a million stories, but for a moment, change and, and segue into something we always talk about on Publish Mo Profit, and that is you've written your books. Certainly at this stage of your life, you're, you're writing, you're speaking, uh, not because there's a financial need, but but you're doing it to make a huge impact on people. And of course, there's a massive income that goes along with that, rightfully so, based on the impact that you're making. In the earlier days, though, before Sharon Lecter was known and speaking all over, uh, you had a, a dream or a goal or a vision of what, you know, writing a book uh, might be able to do for you and to do for your business. And of course, you even mentioned to me, this is something that you teach and speak on to your your students about writing. So I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, some of the most incredible things that have happened since you started writing your books, what your books have led to for you. It's almost too general a question to ask, so forgive that, because most people I interviewed haven't sold hundreds of millions of copies of books. And so it, it certainly led to interesting places Places for you, um, but what are some of the most maybe amazing things that uh, you can recall in regards to what your books have done for you? Well, I'll share a story that happened earlier this year. Um, Tarek El Moussa, who's the star of the television show Flipper Flop, is a, I've known him for many years, and he's part of EXP. My husband and I joined EXP Realty earlier this year. And so we worked together with Tarek, and he and I have talked about doing a book together several times. But we went to support him. He's launched. He had launched to form a fund for multi family housing. So we went to support that launch and his partner came up and his name is Chris Hansen. And he introduced himself to me. He says, you don't know me, but I'm standing before you a multimillion in real estate because of you. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, he said, 16 years ago, you came to my class at, AS- at U of A, University of Arizona in wow. Tucson, wow. and taught a class on entrepreneurship. And because of that, I got involved in real estate. And so, to, to understand that you see somebody's standing in front of you, very successful, and they basically are highlighting 16 years ago, you came to my, and I only went to the University of Arizona once. Wow. And you, so you never know the impact. So, that's the whole play big movement is be number one in your field. Live your legacy because your legacy is created every single day with every heart you touch. I touched that heart and never knew it for 16 years. Mm. And then he comes and he shares that with me. And so Mike and I invested in the fund because I said, I want to go full circle. So now, you know, we are supporting them. And uh, it's just, you know, it's those kind of stories that just come back. And it's just amazing to hear people share with us the things that they've done in their life because of something that I've written that inspired them. And then you know, our clients understanding how to make them elevate to a position of authority. They're all experts. Everybody watching this right now, you're experts because nobody's had your successes or your learning opportunities. The issue is, does everybody know that? Mm. And you need to use the, create the tools that share your expertise. And when you write the book or write a program or do something, you elevate yourself to the authority. And as an authority, you start seeing doors open that you would never have dreamed would open for you. But you have to do the work. You have to establish a credibility. You have to be consistent in that credibility. You have to be authentic and consistent and transparent so that you can build the ability to create the impact that you want to create. But those are the kinds of stories. I had a client, um, a young gal, she was a real estate agent. She worked in her parents' firm and she's like, nobody gives me any respect. She was the top producing agent, but she was young and she was the kid, right? She had, all the old guys would pat her on the head. And I said, well, you know, maybe we need to get you some authority. And so I said, do you, your buyers all ask the same questions? She said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, how about your sellers? Yeah, yeah. So I challenged her to go write a little ebook on the six things a buyer needs to know or six things a seller needs to know. And she was a go-getter. She went and did it. And she called me back about six months later. And she said, you'll never believe it. She says, I'm still top producing agent in my company. But those old guys are now coming and asking me for my opinion. They're not patting me on the head anymore. <laughs> because she wrote those books. And she's now has a regular spot on a radio show. And she gets interviewed on TV. Just because she took what she knew and made it in tangible form, she created her own authority. And everybody watching and listening can do that, too. And that's obviously what, Rob, your company does to help people. Yeah. Sharon, love it. Thank you so much for your generosity with your time and so many great stories and so much wisdom to share. We mentioned SharonLector.com. We mentioned several others. You know, any particular link or is SharonLector.com the best place maybe for people to get information? You tell me. Well, sure. If you visit SharonLector.com, there's a link on the front page, or you can go to PersonalSuccessEquation.com, okay. where I share an equation I released in my first book with the Napoleon Hill Foundation called Three Feet from Gold. And as you're combining your passion and your talent, most of us stop there because we think we have to do it on our own, times A, association, the power of association. I can tell you all of my success comes from having the right associations and getting rid of the wrong ones. Mm. And then times A, taking action. And then plus F, faith, having faith in yourself, having faith in what you're doing, having faith that it's needed and necessary, and have faith that it will succeed. Yeah. And too many of us, that F is fear and holds mm. us back. And so that's the personal success equation. You go to personalsuccessequation.com. I have a little deeper study on, on how to apply that and how to trigger it in your own life. And certainly reach out to me, SharonLector.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Email me directly, info at SharonLector.com. Okay. All right. Well, be ready for a deluge. So, Sharon, thank you again. Uh, Great to talk to you. I was really looking forward to this and I look forward to, you know, potentially more things that we can do, or I'm certainly very interested in learning more about the things that that you're doing and involved in. So thanks for being on the podcast and uh, really excited to see all the things that you do in the future. Thank you, Rob. I so appreciate it. And I appreciate you doing this for everybody because sharing your knowledge makes you the authority and sharing it gives them the opportunity to learn from you. So thank you. Thank you.